Hi, welcome to Laura Hankey's Transformational Voice Teaching Vlog today. I am interviewing a friend of mine that I've known for a number of years now, and I'm super excited to introduce you to Brenda Bryan, who is a transformational coach. She is the founder of the Speakers Club and the Badass Warrior Circle Mastermind, and first time author. And so I invited her to talk today about her new book, which I will let Brenda introduce. Um, but we were just chatting a little here before I turned the recording on. And one thing I found kind of interesting is that both Brenda and I were inspired to write books during the lockdown of COVID. And for me, that book was How Abella Found Her Voice, which I know a lot of my um, blog readers have read the book. Um, and for me personally, it was the closest I have ever come to a complete download experience. It was, I just felt like I was inspired, like I was given the material and it was the most fun piece of writing I've ever done. So I wanted to bring Brenda on board to talk about her book and her process because it's one that I definitely want to read. And I think a lot of my readers will be interested in it as well. So with that, Brenda, why don't you just kind of give us an introduction to, first of all, the title of your book where people can find it, and what inspired you to start writing it? Uh, well, the title of the book is called Inward and Beyond, Transformation as a Conscious Choice. And I started writing it because I needed to find a way to exercise a part of me that I had no place to vocalize what was going on internally, emotionally, energetically. And I... Uh, I've always loved poetry, but it was never my intention to set out to write a book. What happened was, is I had I read uh, uh, Elizabeth Gilbert's um, Big Magic, and one of the things she says in there is that when inspiration hits, follow it. And I'm like, I'm a creator and a creative, so it's like, okay, let's do that. And then one day I was I was doing dishes, and this poem wanted to come through and I went that's it so I took my phone and I and I basically started to to write, write what came through and um over a course of of a year 18 months I wrote um probably somewhere in the notion of 60 poems wow some you know this and that and some still on incomplete but the, the journey that I went on was about healing and about using my, my uh, knowledge of healing to, to elicit a different voice for me. And I was surprised at the, the nature of how the, how the writing was going. And um, I, um, I had no intention of showing this to anybody. I had no intention of asking for any feedback about any of it. That was not why I was doing it. But as the process unfolded, what's, what began to happen is as I would share this or that because I liked what I was doing and it said things that I was not capable of saying in any other way. And as you know, I'm a wordsmith. Mm -hmm. right? Writing has its own level. I, 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 I'm a speaker, but writing is its own maze for me so the poems were coming out in a really amazing way in terms of articulating a different voice and that yeah. and that's what i got excited about it's like this this could really be a new platform for me in terms of how transformation works and how to communicate how transformation works right yeah and how to communicate it and 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 where inspiration comes from in order to heal right we don't know it could be a painting it could be running it could be you know cooking we do not know where we need to apply ourselves in order for the process of healing to actually occur um but in this case it became words that became poems and essays that were that took took me on a journey and and the book is laid out in a particular order but that's not how the poems came out they just came right out. and so then an, an editor a friend of mine uh, helped me uh one of the women who a woman who lived in the house and was part of seeing and witnessing the journey i was on 
who is an, an avid reader and writer, started to give me feedback and support me and became one of my first editors of the book. And I was like, that just carried me. And so she ordered the book into four four categories. One was, you know, the spark, right? When a relationship starts and all of the yummy stuff that happens in there. And I wrote all about that. And then well, and you know, let me stop you for just a second, because I kind of wanted to go back and give that kind of lead in we were talking about earlier. Well, and one is Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic. For anyone who's listening to this who hasn't read that book, it's an excellent book to read. And I just wanted to elaborate on what you said about she says when inspiration strikes grab it she also said because if you don't somebody else might yeah and that's a big part of that book is there's something out there in the ethers that wants to come into being and if you're given this gift uh and you ignore it somebody else just might grab it for you <laughs> and, it, and it'll be brought into the world by somebody else but also you had said that you were in a relates relationship that had become toxic and so that was a that was a challenge. That was a very difficult space. You were in a very painful place yourself, but that's how this writing process, that, that gave you the seed, right? Yes. Yep. And it's interesting how that happens sometimes, how our biggest challenges can be the things that lead us into the next creative moment. So now with that, you were talking about the four areas that, so let go ahead and go back to what you were saying. I just wanted to interject my little bit there. So. Well, and I think that I want to anchor that a little bit is, is that it's it's through adversity that we become strengthened by, by what it is we've had to meet in the challenge. Mm -hmm. And and I and I accept that as being part of, of what's made me a wiser elder, you know, is, is that, I, that I faced lots of adversity and this was just another piece of growth for me. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't, it, it certainly wasn't about anything that, that that happened because of her she was just an opportunity for me to grab where I was not in in a place of radical self-care mm -hmm. and so I took that and 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 used it as as fuel to to exercise a whole other layer of ownership of who I wanted to be in the journey I wanted to be on and what that means for any of us looking to grow into something is like everything that's offered is of value. How do we perceive it and how do we use it? And so it was dark in there for a long time, uh, you know, trying to trying to to look at what happened and own what happened and 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 take responsibility for what happened. It, 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 it wasn't about that other person. It was like, oh, there's a huge piece of what needs to happen for me here and how can I access it and that's really what this book is about is is the accessing of ownership of things that I didn't recognize how tra how traumatized I was from my childhood and how yeah. that was that was playing out in the ways that I was choosing choosing partners and the ways that I was I was playing uh, a victim to to my childhood and and all of that and so so you may or may not see that in the poems. I really don't know what happened for me was is the was the fun of actually listening and taking what was being offered and working with it and creating some what I think is some pretty fun material. So let me ask you a question then, because this, this is a little interesting. You you probably know Cynthia uh, Mazur. She's the ar artist that we uh, were in the same E Women Network with. Maybe you don't know Cynthia. Oh yes, I know Cynthia. Yes. I okay, so um, she was the last person I interviewed, and we we talked a lot about creativity. So my question for you is, where do you think creativity comes from? Oh, I think it's all around us all the time. It is our wish and desire to participate in its in its in its explosion that becomes the juice of life, right? I, I'm a creative. I'm yeah. never not going to be that. I'm never not going to want to see a solution to a situation or try a new thing on or experiment with color or what or words or whatever. I mean, I I came out wanting to see us use creativity as as an as a, a expor, exploration of how we can live to a fuller version of ourselves to our dreams and so I'm, I'm always looking for the next opportunity to be creative. That's I love it. I love it. And I, I I approach life quite that way myself. Maybe not quite to the same extent. But you mentioned cooking earlier. 
to me, cooking is an expression in creativity. That's part of the reason I love it so much. But here's another question. So what would you say to someone who walked up to, walked up to you and said, Brenda, I don't have a creative bone in my body? Because people say that. A lot of people say yeah, that. They do. I think, I think it, is, it is a limited belief that they were programmed to, to take on. Every one of us has, has the ability to breathe in a new perspective about who we are and what we want, that we're always creating, that we're always in a creative place. What we need to do is, is kind of be in the question of, well, what's, what is the creative act for me? What would that be like? And it's different for everybody. And there's no like not learning how to draw. It's, you know, creativity is not about drawing or painting or that. It's about, oh, I know how to fix that washing machine. I know how to take it apart and put it back together again and have all the parts actually fit back together. There's, that's a creative process in knowing how to do the mechanics of that, whether we understand that or not. And so, you know, how we go about any given solution to any given problem requires a degree of, of creativity. creativity. I agree with you. And I personally, I, I believe, and I'd like your take on this too, that is that a lot of it has to do with the society that you're born into because other cultures in other parts of the world, everybody's more creative. I remember somebody, I can't remember who it was. I think it was somebody, a friend who was going to Bali and said that they discovered that in I think it was Bali. I'm not hundred percent sure, but like everybody does like seven different forms of creative stuff, yeah. dance, painting, whatever. And, and so their creativity is just accepted as a natural part of life. But I think here in the States, it's kind of like some of us were touched with the creative one when we were born. And therefore those are the creative people and they have to be different and special. And the rest of us aren't. I think it really is a, a, an undervaluing of, of what an actual fact we've been put on the planet to do. We're all been put on the planet to be expressive around the true nature of who we are. And that takes a whole hell of a lot of creativity to, to, to come to the, to the table with the truth about who we are. Now, not everybody lives in that, in that, in that belief or philosophy. Um, most of us are numbing out on drugs and TV and things that do not stimulate uh, self-expression. And, yes. and because I teach self-expression is a fundamental thing about empowering women is that we get to say what we want to say, do what we want to do, be who we want to be. But that means stepping up and having some courage to get past being told what we're allowed to be. I am so glad you just used the word courage because this has been sitting in the back of my mind going, not only, well, it takes guts. That's what I'm trying to say. It, it, in this particular culture of ours, I think it takes guts to be creative. Yep. It's great. It's a courageous thing to do to own who you are inside and allow your creativity to bring whatever that is inside and express it in the outer world, right? Yeah, well, because people want to tell you, you know, to behave yourself or, yeah, or, you know, you're no good at that or you shouldn't sing or you shouldn't play mu a musical instrument. I mean, yeah, you know, Michael Jordan was told he wasn't a basketball player. Like, you know, people are <laughs> wrong all the time. Right. And so that's what we have to stand in the in the in the recognition of people's opinion of us doesn't matter what you think of me, you know, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I'm not here to please you. I know you want me to be, but that's not how I'm living my life. And it's taken me a long time to get to that because I'm a natural born pleaser and I'm a natural born rescuer. I'm a coach. Coaches are rescuers. <laughs> So what are you going to do with that? You have to find the appropriate application to the quality of who you are. And, and, you know, I am a wordsmith. I love words. I not, I'm not an academic wordsmith. I don't know the meaning of a lot of words. I make up new words every day because, because there are times when you just need a new word and that's how the whole vocabulary of life gets done. It's just like, well, it's not been created yet. So, Let's make a new word. We'll I love it. I love it. But speaking of words, that's another special challenge that you had that I didn't have when I was writing my book because you're dyslexic. So how did, how did that, and you're very open about it. So how did that come into play when you were putting this book together for well, people out there who may be dyslexic and may want to write a book? It's the blessing of having the technologies that actually, because when I was, in my earlier days, when I, when, you know, when you had to look up a word in the dictionary, you didn't know how to spell it anyway. So 
What the hell is the use of a dictionary when you can't spell the word to begin with? I mean, really, please, people. Um, but now that we have, uh, you know, the computer will correct words. You can speak into the thing. You can you can talk in and type words. You know, you don't have to. You the technology is really is what made the difference for me. You know, and the other part of that was the relationship I'm talking about. You know, she edited a bunch of my stuff and I would read my stuff after she edited and I recognized through her editing where I could adjust my writing to be more impactful. And then I've taken, you know, courses and all kinds of things around because I'm a speaker. I'm also training my my speakers how to write, how to write and do their message. So I've been in training to another level of how to how to use writing as as a means to communicate because i knew i needed it if i was going to really make my may help my business to to grow and yeah. i wanted it as well and so what has unfolded is is you know quite unexpected i never set out to publish a book but once i got to a certain point in the process it it was demanded of me by spirit which is spirit's been moving through with me the whole time mm -hmm. and so i just i follow you know i'm somebody who follows the lead of spirit i have asked for help i have told them to talk to me about where i'm going next and they present and i listen and i go there right i mean that's how i got to portland <laughs> so, right right <laughs> You know, so so it wasn't my intention to set out to write a book and people say, oh, it must have been really hard. And it's like it wasn't hard because I set out for it to be a creative process of, for me to have fun with. Yeah. And I and I and any time it wasn't fun, I would put it down and I'd put it away for whatever, however long I wanted to until I was like, I'm missing my poems. I got to pick them back up and I need to do some work with that again or something yeah. to come through. So it never was something that was hard. It was always something that was, was there was a craving to keep moving forward because I, because I felt like it, there was, there was value in there and it's very raw and it's very vulnerable. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to show the world this part, but I'm a transformational coach. I believe wholeheartedly that if I'm walking my talk and truly showing up in my vulnerability, that I'm going to be able to help my clients be even more available to their own power by through vulnerability. And so, so I'm 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 willing to step up like that because if I'm asking you to do it, I better be doing it too. There you go. I I love that. <laughs> Well, and okay, so I haven't checked the time, but I think we're probably at close to where we wanted to be. So I got, yeah, just a couple, couple last questions for you, um, you know, for the listeners and readers here that are watching this video. So in just two sentences, how would you describe, well, it's, let's put the two questions in one. How would you describe your book in just a couple of sentences, what it's about and who it's for? So what the book is about and who is your intended audience, your readers? The book is a story. It's a story written in poems and essays. And it's for people who need the encouragement to know that they are worthy of what they seek and that there is pain and stepping through the pain brings you into a power of who you are. And I and I want to exemplify that. I'm going to put an ebook together, a workbook around around the book that will walk you through storytelling and how the stories can help you reveal what it is you need to step into own about what your story really offers you and the power behind um, writing uh, to to tell your story. Oh, that's exciting. And I'm even more excited to read it. And okay, so before I stop the recording, just one last thing, where can people find about your work? And where can they find your book? Um, my work, I have a, a website, it's brendarbryan.com. And so that tells you everything that I'm up to. And the book is on sale in Amazon. And it's on sale in Barnes and Nobles. And it's on sale at Walmart. And it's on sale at Target. But I would invite you to go to Amazon and if you like it leave a review because if it gets enough reviews on Amazon they're going to push it and that'll help me uh, have credentials to uh, step into my speaking world using my book as as leverage and which is really what excites me about this is like 
it's a whole different voice for me that I get to, to be, you know, I, you know, me, Laura, you know, I'm, I'm authentic. I'm straight up. I don't, I don't pull any punches on what I believe to be true. And so this book is, is about that level of bringing clarity to, to radical self-care. All right, y'all, you heard that. Go out, buy our book. I'm going to. And <laughs> thanks so much for thanks so much for joining us today for this video. We'll see you next time.